you know, for years people talked about shop drawings, submittals. The EJCDC language in 213, uh, we began to think hard about it, but we never really made a change. But there's a new version of EJCDC that will be out late spring, certainly no later than summer. And the 2018 version actually will have a new definition of submittals, and it will address a lot of what we're going to talk about now in terms of how submittals and shop drawings are handled. So first, talk about shop drawings, and this is in EJCDC. C700 is the name of the general conditions of the construction contract, and the definition is all drawings, diagrams, illustrations, you can read it, schedules of the data. The important parts are information specifically prepared or assembled by or for the contractor and submitted by the contractor, and we'll talk about all of this, to illustrate some portion of the work. I put the last sentence in red, um, recognizing that it really isn't part of a definition, but it's an important, it's such an important concept that at EJCDC, we decided to make it part of the, of the uh, definition. So that's the actual definition that you've got the handout. But again, everybody historically, shop drawing submittals, people have looked at it and really used them interchangeably. And today, with the way we look at shop drawings and the way we're going to talk about looking at submittals, that's probably not appropriate. There's other types of submittals. Um, all of the things here, progress schedules, uh, material and product certificates, test reports, photos typically that would be a requirement to come in, you know, once a month or certainly periodically to demonstrate, uh, you know, the progress on the project, quality control reports, temporary structures kind of gets an asterisk that has a hybrid that we'll talk about a little later. Uh, qualification statements, safety plans, excavation plans, surveys, all of these are submittals that the contract documents typically require the contractor to submit, but would you really approve them the same way you would approve a shop drawing? And, and the answer is really no. You certainly wouldn't look at progress photos the same way you would look at a pub submittal. And CSI recognized this some years ago and, and designated four different types of action of submittals. Action informational closeout and maintenance. And action submittals include shop drawings, product data samples, testing plans, and delegated design. And Jerry and I will talk about that later. You can put an asterisk on that one too. We'll get into that in more detail. But then they recognize the informational submittals, and a partial list would be progress photos, quality control reports, test reports. You know, again, you don't look at a test report the same way you look at a pump shop drawing. Either the test report demonstrates that the equipment passed the test or it didn't. Uh, supplier qualifications, again, you would look at it differently. Closeout submittals, O&M data, record documentation, and then finally maintenance submittals, which would be just lists of spare parts, it could actually be the spare parts themselves, and oftentimes specialized tools for use on some of the equipment that's being furnished as part of the project. So what we're going to look at is the difference between action submittals and informational. But closeout and maintenance really get the same type of treatment as informational submittals. For years, there's always been a concern about the liability of shop drawings, and there have been uh, papers written that maybe we should do jobs without submittals. Uh, some have actually suggested it, and, and it at one point got some exposure. The concern is an insufficient time to review in today's modern pace, uh, insufficient project budget. I don't have the money to do that. Um, and recognizing that shop drawings are regrettably often used as a means to subvert contract requirements or to serve up as potential change orders. And the response was, or the suggestion for those that put this forward was, 
why don't we just ask for a certification, the contractor telling us everything I'm going to submit meets the requirements of the contract, and you don't need to see any paper to do it. Um, I don't know. It doesn't work for me when you really look at why do we have shop drawings. And certainly, it really is an allocation of resources. Um, and I think the fifth bullet really is key to me. Shop drawings are the opportunity for the contract to demonstrate that they really understand what the engineer or architect has designed and what's to be built. The second bullet, when I say no design is complete in all details, a lot of people, especially owners, will look at me and say, what do you mean no design is complete? Well, a design under a, under a design bid build is delivery system is brought to the point of enabling the owner to get apples to apples bids or pricing. Again, it could be negotiation, but to get pricing on a specific project for the construction of a facility. But you can't just pick up a set of contract drawings and go out and build it. There's much more detail that has to be developed. There are some performance-based requirements oftentimes in the specifications. And shop drawings bridge that gap between design and construction. Um, it gives the contractor the opportunity to bring their expertise to the table by proposing different details, um, individual shops, uh, fabrication shops, and that's where the original term came from, by the way, shop drawings. It was the language of the shop where they were talking about the fabrication versus the construction on site. So individual shops have different details on how to accomplish the same thing. Um, and again, having shop drawings gives the opportunity for contractors and shops to bring their expertise to the table to accomplish the same end result. And by letting contractors bring their expertise and giving them leeway in how to construct the completed project, the only gets the benefit of the best of both worlds. He gets the expertise of both parties and he gets the better pricing by not forcing a contractor to do it some way that they're not familiar with. It also promotes coordination and communication. And as I said, the language of us engineers really is different than the language of the trades. And the shop drawing pulls all of that together. And the last is really my favorite. I used to preach to young engineers that shop drawings are the last chance to catch a problem without a jackhammer. If you miss it on a shop drawing, and you place the concrete with insufficient reinforcing steel, you're talking jackhammers. If you pick it up on a shop drawing, you're talking about a couple pencil marks to add some additional steel that might be required, and you do it without any problems out in the field. And I just want to interject from my perspective as a lawyer, and I think the only way I'm able to stay employed is in-house counsel, is by making sure that firms understand how important the shop review process is and make sure that they allocate not only appropriate time but train personnel uh, to undertake and perform those tasks because as a lawyer, I'm always involved once the project went south or in this case where there was uh, a circumstance where the obligations of the respected parties under the uh, shop drawing uh, review and uh, responsibility matrix were not fulfilled. And when those types of things happen, it has devastating results, not only in terms of liability, but in terms of human lives. So I think that this is a topic that people don't pay attention to until it's too late. And that's one of the reasons why we uh, developed this uh, presentation so that uh, firms uh, particularly uh, understand uh, the scope, the budget, and not only that, the assignment of personnel, and it's crucial uh, to the review process.